Tonight we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the sickness behavior. We're going to talk about why people are having these problems. We're going to talk about how the trails are affecting us. Because they are now. There's no doubt. Even the EPA said so. They just made mention of it about, uh, well, a couple months ago, actually, last summer. They admitted it. The EPA said, it's affecting you. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I'm Clay Lewis. Listen to Ground Zero, and we'll be back. In the United Kingdom, they just published their mortality statistics for 2016. And you'd expect, okay, what's well, top three? Cancer, heart attack, stroke. Always has been. Number one, dementia. Number one. Which, of course, includes uh, Alzheimer's, which is caused by aluminum. They found carbon nanotubes in Parisian lungs. Uh, in Turin, half of the children had uh, severe DNA damage from nanoparticulates. And there's a study that came out recently showing how nanoparticles interfere with the nuts and bolts of the internal workings of your cells and cause <clears throat> rheumatoid arthritis, which is just one of the very many autoimmune diseases we're all coming down with. We don't need any more evidence. We need to get this out into the public consciousness and say, oh, hell no. I wanted to let you know that there was a study that was released back in the summer of 2016, the Environmental Protection Agency, they declared that emissions from jet engines endanger the health of human beings and the environment. They pointed out, they were investigating the possibility that lingering contrails, this is what they called them, lingering contrails contribute to dangerous heat waves, more powerful storms, lengthening of fire seasons and other dangerous consequences. Well, there's a new study about air pollution that's revealing that once again, the particulate, the aluminum and barium that we talk about in the trails, is creating dementia. For older women, breathing air that is heavily polluted by metals and other sources of fine particulates nearly doubles the likelihood of developing dementia, and the cognitive effects of air pollution are dramatically more pronounced in women who carry a genetic variant known as APO, that's A-P-O-E-E-4, which puts them at higher risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. There are so many things going on, and it's because these nanoparticles are disrupting the workings of our cells, our bodies attack ourselves, and it goes nuts. But just concentrating on what's being sprayed is only half the story. The electromagnetic aspect of this is devastating. The Russians were using the woodpecker program back in the 80s. Could they, they could they change it? Right here. Yeah, yeah, because it's very long wavelength. It travels a very long distance. And it's such simple technology. Our body's resonant frequency is five hertz. All you have to do is just point that at someone and it's, yeah. If you pick someone up and shake them at five times a second, they'll fall apart. There's so much research on the cognitive, physiological, and other effects of electromagnetic radiation on our bodies and our minds. And, you know, put a burrito in the microwave, you know, it does something. You often find you, you just be going about along with your day and then suddenly like, bam, you're extremely tired. You just have to sleep. And, and you'll find a lot of people at the same time will have those things. You'll have people getting similar mm. like muscle spasms in different parts of the body all over the place. I mean, it's full spectrum warfare. I mean, the electromagnetic, the spraying, all these sort of things. In Scotland last year, between 2014 and 2015, the death rate from respiratory failure went up like 14% in one year. That's statistically significant. I mean, why aren't, aren't they asking, uh, why, you know, is this massive jump? Italy's death rate overall went up 11%. This is carnage. So when you're looking at the spraying, it could be private contractors doing sure. weather modification. It could be a number of things that they're doing. Geoengineering, of course, Matt, uh, you know, he, he was the one that introduced me to the idea of geoengineering mm -hmm. being used and, and doing the studies of geoengineering. That's what we talked about the last time you were on the program. Well, you heard that now they're, they're, uh, the bees are an endangered species. Exactly. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was reading about that the other day, that uh, they now have made them an endangered species, and that's frightening. Because I mean, before we had the, what would they call that, hive... Um, you know, colony like, collapse disorder. Yeah, colony collapse, uh, colony, uh, collapse disorder. Uh, they said the colony collapse disorder could be because of, you know, Roundup, Monsanto, you name off all these things. But think about this. The bees are dying of the same type of problems that we're having, and that is dehydration, not getting enough water, not having enough water in our bodies, uh, having diseases that are creating this sick behavior that we're having, and the bees get it too. Even people who have good night's sleep are not feeling it. They wake up tired, they wake up dragging, and so what else could it be but something environmental, something uh, toxic? 
that we're being exposed to. It's got to be above government because it's global. Right. They're doing it all over the world. Yeah. China, Russia, everywhere. And then that's the thing. If we don't know who, then we don't know all of the answers for them. And they can't make a solid opinion. One of my biggest frustrations is the line, they wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> I've heard that too. Why would they do that to us? Because they have families too. And I tell them, well, you know, I have a genetic disorder that makes me prone to cancer. And why? Because they were testing nuclear weapons in the west deserts of Nevada, St. George, Cedar City area in Utah. My family was subjected to that radiation, which caused some DNA problems, and it got passed down to me. And now, your son. Yeah, and my son. They did that because they felt that that was more important than the lives of people. Spend a few bucks, uh, get your rainwater analysis, you can get your hair analyzed. And I have footage of these sprayers and, they're, and, and they show up on flight radar. I don't know any airline that does not spray. They aren't told, oh, by the way, turn this switch when you get to a certain point. It's, it's all done centrally. There's plenty of patents where the substance actually gets injected into the exhaust. I mean, there's a US Navy patent called the powder contrail. There's so much freaking evidence, it's insane. Technocracy, this is a crackpot idea dreamed up in the 1930s. They wanted to replace the economic system with an energy-based thing. But like, if you have a gold-based economy, you know how much a loaf of bread is worth and compared to the amount of gold there is. But with energy, you have to know how much energy is being stored, transferred, whatever at all times, hence smart meters, smart every freaking thing, reject it. The official line on this whole thing is, oh, we're all gonna die from global warming and we might just have to spray sulfates into the sky to reduce global warming. David Keith, Ken Calder, and Alan Roebuck are the three main guys who go out to do this stuff. They'll only talk about sulfates, but uh, their own papers say, actually, sulfates don't work. They stick together, they fall out of the sky. Instead, you've got to use nanoparticulate aluminum, barium, strontium, magnetite, and so on. And this character, David's research, according to US Code 50, uh, section 1520A, I think. It's legal to spray chemical and biological warfare on a, on a civilian population as long as you call it research. So it's banned as warfare, but you can do it in your own populations. So I think all the, all the spraying is generally done by people's own militaries. What they're doing is they're establishing a geoengineering governance regime. It's a self-proclaimed regime. They asked for papers, to identify things like, should we even involve the UN? Should we take into consideration human health impacts? What role will public perception and opinion play while we establish this solar geoengineering governance regime? Self-titled regime. So Patrick and I, we independently um, submitted papers. I hired a PhD. My paper delved into um, the human rights aspect, that we have the right to environmental decision-making participation. Both of our papers were, of course, rejected. It is their plan to do full-scale deployment. They claim that all of the research that we've been seeing, these grid patterns, are research. They're admitting to it. The chemtrails, the geoengineering, the solar radiation management, Okay, and now you can even look up the Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative, SRMGI. Okay, it's an initiative to govern their solar radiation management, which is chemtrails, which is geoengineering. Mm -hmm. So these people are meeting, 24 scientists behind closed doors, to develop the plan for the regime to take hold to go full-scale deployment. Some days don't have chemtrails, right? Some days are clear. And really, the more clear days you get in a row, the more likelihood it is that you're gonna get a grid pattern coming up. But this irregular pattern of appearance where you not only have no lines in the sky, but you also don't have the air traffic, okay? Listeners, feel free to look up at your sky. Look at that air traffic. See those days where there's nothing going on. And this irregularity in the appearance is, it's the clue, it's the first clue for the, for the newbies. Chemtrails are also called solar geoengineering. It's also called solar radiation management. It's also called stratospheric aerosol injections. Okay, and what they like to do is they like to confuse us with the terminology. It's all one thing, right? It's all chemtrails. It's all geoengineering. It's all solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol injections. Whatever word you want to give it, it's all treason. It's very, very obvious that chemtrail does not behave like an actual cloud formation. It forms out and fades into a milky haze. All right, 
irregular pattern of appearance, the number of trails seen simultaneously at a given time. When you're sitting out there and it's a normal day and then all of a sudden a dozen planes show up and grid the sky, whereas you've seen three planes all day, something is going on there. That's it. It's that simple. How come all